that is a beautiful name. From whom did, obviously your parents named you that, I presume, right? Yes, they yes. did. They After did. someone or because well, of someone? Well, my mother's name was Irene Mary. Oh. My grandmother's name was Mary Veronica. And my father's name was Ernest Ray. So oh. that's, I got it all wrapped up in one. In one, Mary Ray Waller, yes. known previously in her, her pre-Vatican life as Sister... No, she was known as Mary Ray in her pre-Vatican life. Oh, really? <laughs> and my religious life, I became Mary. I became Ernest Mary. Oh, all right. Which I was understand. My, my father yes. and my mother, and mm -hmm. I asked my father about how mm -hmm. he felt mm -hmm. if I wanted if I went back to my name. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first ones to do mm -hmm. that, and his comment to me was, "What did your mother and I name you?" Oh boy. So mm -hmm. that. When I got back from my home visit, <laughs> I made the request. <laughs> and here you are. And here I am. And, here I am. and many siblings? I have one brother uh, living. I have a sister that died very young. Mm. So I was always the oldest of two. So mm. I have to mark myself as an older, <laughs> as the, the oldest, as sister. oldest child, <laughs> as oldest child. Continue Where does your to. brother live? He lives in Jacksonville. Yeah. We're homebodies. That's I was where born you were in born? Jacksonville. Oh. Yes, he lives in um, he lives in Jacksonville with his family, and he has one son who lives in Jacksonville near Ponte Vedra. Have you always lived in the South, other than your time here in Adrian? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. if you consider Virginia South and mm -hmm. Washington D.C. South, <laughs> that's it. All right, all right. I presume you met our sisters in Jacksonville I did, School. At Assumption. At Assumption. I was uh, a mem um, when I was in sixth grade. In the uh, school system in the South back in the 60s, 50, well, at this point it would have been the 50s, they um, did not take older children. So when my brother started first grade, that entitled me to be able to enter the Catholic school at sixth grade. Mm. So that's what, so I started What do you mean Catholic older school. children? Let's say started in first grade. That's right. And I, I, and it, when I, and, and I didn't do first grade. Mm -hmm. and, um, I went to the public school near, near mm -hmm. uh, just about a quarter of a mile mm -hmm. from our house. It was with, well, I walked every, I walked to go there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, everyone in your family six feet tall? No, no my mother was <laughs> under six feet. My um, my dad was tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, I always envied tall women. Isn't that something? I yes. think I got that from my grandmother. Mm -hmm. uh, more on my father's side, the women the women were tall. On my mother's mm -hmm. side, they were from Germany. They mm -hmm. were short and very stocky and hardy. And on my father's side, they were uh, tall and uh, carried the uh, Native American. Uh, Features the high mm -hmm. cheekbones mm -hmm. and tall, straight back and mm -hmm. shoulders back, and they were very. Yeah. Have you ever identified the uh, tribe, the Native yes, American or Cherokee? Cherokee. We're on, on that side, mm -hmm. but my father did not find that to be an acceptable. He didn't. He did not celebrate that. He did not practice that. He did not announce that, and he basically discouraged me from talking a lot about it because it was just uh, not, um, well, not, it was not an asset uh, to be, it was more of an asset to be good old America. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so um, Twas not kosher. No, no, we talked about it when I was in high school, mm -hmm. you know, because I said you never, but that's when I had my event with my grandmother. My grandmother called for me when I was, uh, thir I was 13 to come spend the summer. It was, she was adamant with my father. My father left home, his story, he has to have on another mm -hmm. tape, but he left home when he was in high school, finished high school from a neighbor's house and then entered the Marines, uh, had a disagreement with his father. And uh, word is very important in our family. So he went off on his own, but his mother always stayed in touch with him, always visited us. And at 13, she, the summer that I was 13, she insisted that I come. I could bring my brother, so he was eight. So my brother and I 
went by bus to Shibuta, Mississippi on the farm, spent summer on the farm. I absolutely loved it. And uh, I had a, an experience with my grandmother in the, uh, that I, uh, in the field. We would go out every morning and we would get the field peas and we would get the corn. And, uh, it awakened in you something that you probably didn't even know was there. Well, it was my first experience of receiving something that was a part of the soul that I had no idea um, what necessarily to do with or that I needed to do anything with it other mm -hmm. than know that I would carry it within. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as you grew older, you, you did your own exploring, didn't you? Well, I did because she told me that someday I would return this back to the family. There would be, the missing link in the family would be reconnected. And I'm at 13, I'm saying, okay, oh. okay fine. Yes, un yes, mm -hmm. not I understand, yeah, but no. you just say yes. <laughs> it's that yes that reverberates throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Uh, well, that gift. The, second, the next yes that I felt like mm -hmm. that was that final at final profession? Yes. Oh my, oh my. We, th we were, I, was, I entered in 1962, and we were uh, the last December crowd. And when I made first profession, I went to Little Flower in Hollywood, Florida. Home to me. Yes. I mean, I felt yeah. I'd been in exile, not exile, <laughs> that's the wrong word to use, but I had been in a foreign country. Oh, well, in the cornfields of Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find a cornfield. <laughs> oh, God. But I knew that I was where I was to be. That, that's, and, mm -hmm. that, and to me, that's been, I've known when I'm where I am to be is the place I am to be. And there are some questions I just don't question, and that's mm -hmm. one of those. So at... Um, when we made, when I was missioned, my first mission ended up being my only mission until final profession. So I did not return back to Adrian until in 1968 in December. I didn't come up here and visit. I, I mean, I was down at Little Flower for all five of, uh, for that whole those and, five years. And relatively near your family. Relatively, 300 mm -hmm. some miles away, but <laughs> relatively near. And attended Barry which I just thought was absolutely wonderful. I mean, it had all of the, uh, the, the quests that, that, to me, seemed important questions. Mm -hmm. I'm basically, Jody, I'm a seeker, uh, a pursuer mm -hmm. of what I know intuitively, so I know within mm -hmm. it contains a kernel of truth that I need in order to fulfill my promise that I made about coming to live this life, this time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and bringing your whole self absolutely. with it, and yes. and, and <clears throat> not um, discovering something that's like a clay model mm -hmm. that's all set up, mm -hmm. but something that's unfolding like a flower that's mm -hmm. blooming. And so it's just mm -hmm. super um, exciting because Barry University had a fantastic library. Um, and um, it, a neighbor, and I got to uh, Sister Eileen Rice, who, who was in history. I mean, she was a short woman, but oh my goodness, she was just demanding that that uh, you pursue excellence. And if you're pursuing history, you pursue the breadth of history, not just one fact within history. And all of that just left me to still to feel to be open to study what I had uh, been in seated with by my grandmother and uh, to know more about the Central America, South America. And Barry was very open to that, much more open perhaps than I might have been up here mm -hmm. at Siena, where there's a different uh, context and climate. So uh, that allowed me to begin to pursue, per, uh, to pursue uh, and keep following the thread within myself. At Which is, you have not stopped doing. No, because, uh, <laughs> be uh, but my thread has become threads. My thread has become tapestry. 
My thread has been that which leads to all. Um, when we look at the political, I spent time in political ministry. I, what does a, that mean? I started in, um, I studied government for one thing, and then I was teaching government with the students, but the, the, uh, the, the approach was an approach that was a validating approach. It was the inquiry method, which just really was perfect for me, perf absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. In my journey along the way, now there are incidentals along the way that this worked and that didn't work and that didn't. And I, I, I've, I've come now as I'm in my 70th decade that all of those are like pages in a book. Amen. Wow. Oh, so bless all of that because all of that contributed to having an awareness and a consciousness inside that I that I am participating in something that is m just uh, growing with God. It's terrific. I mean, it's terrific. You just, it, I mean, there's a lot of components and there's a lot of. of of being in, um, of being uh, say, disciplined, being in service, having a goal, and all of that. And I'm just being aware that all of that is contributed to coming to know that we are all in all. We are all with God within. And, and whether we do that as a Buddhist or do that as a Catholic or do that as a, a native person, an indigenous person, do that as a shamanic or person who studies shamanic principles, it does not, it does not make one distinct from the other. It just gives you, it's like the walkers that you need. It gives you the support that you need to know that you're traveling a path that Parts of souls before have traveled. It's terrific. Beautiful. And, Beautiful. and I just, I know that for myself, it has brought me so far, so wide, much wider than anything sitting on the St. John's River, mm -hmm. watching the boats go by, mm -hmm. would have ever, ever done had I not received a call, a call that said, I will be of service say yes. So in doing that, back in 1962, the saying of yes, where I rode north, <laughs> I mean, you think I was going to the Adirondacks or something, <laughs> to go north on the train by myself. Oh, my, my. At 16 and a half, that was, oh. that was, was my who, first trip. Who was your sponsor? My sponsor was Mary Catherine Jordan. Oh, yep. Lucky you. I know. <laughs> and she supported my mother for the whole year and a half. Oh, oh yes. I learned a lot when I went oh. for my first home visit. How mm -hmm. really she comforted um, her. Mm -hmm. Much so. Much mm -hmm. so. We were a very close knit family. Mm -hmm. We were very, very close, and. Uh, so, Mary Ray, would you uh, agree to this, or does this resound with you? <clears throat> I heard recently a woman who said her description of a power, the universe, God, was to say we are one soul. Yes, that that yeah, that would resonate. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. I mean, that takes in everything, everything. Yes living yes. one soul one soul and part of my wanting to share that as a part of my story without mm -hmm. it is to say how grateful I am every day just uh, grateful to be able to explore experience integrate receive and bring back into consciousness with that acceptance 
without necessarily understanding all of it. But that acceptance that we are with divine within, mm -hmm. and we are sending forth the divine with breath, and in the process of that, learning what is our contribution, what is our, um, as it were, fractal of light contribution. And so it, there's a certain sense of humility that goes with that, because most of us like to be bright, shining stars <laughs> and just, you know, really beaming out. And when you call yourself a fractal, it kind of gets it in perspective <laughs> that, that there You're are, that specked. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And it's not. It's so. It's um. I, I'm very. I'm just very, very grateful. And my path here, in Adrian, is an. I feel so honored, honorable. It is such an honorable moment to be with sisters in this moment of their life where finding the grace of the moment for them is not as easy as it used to be. It's not uh, readily right in front of them. It's, it, for many of them, it's, it's in the smile. Mm -hmm. It's in your hug. Mm -hmm. It's in uh, singing together with someone mm -hmm. something that's nonsensical. Yeah. For those of <coughs> who are viewing this, interview right now, I must say, identify you as the director of pa pastoral care here at the Dominican Life Center. I have a place on the, on the pastoral care team, which we hope continues to grow. Right now we're a four petal flower. We'd like to become a six <laughs> petal six flower. Petal. <laughs> and we'd like to have, uh, we have many assistants, many sisters who share in the uh, energy who share in the um, initiative to be sure that no one here in the Dominican Life Center is without knowing there is a caring person today. And so we assist not only the sisters' residents, we also assist the staff who work here. We call them our co-workers. Right. The key word on that is co. <laughs> Everyone has their, their job description, and the part of pastoral care which I have, which I have come to understand is I've been, spent 20-some years, 24 years, training ministers through clinical pastoral education of uh, many denominations, which is a, a reason that for me, where I live is so, it's uh, closer to that base of the all-in-all Mm -hmm. without the distinctions, without <coughs> the little boxes that people can put themselves in. I, my box went away a long time ago. I think when I was 13, I buried the box in the cornfield in Mississippi. So uh, it's been not living without borders, but it's been really living with knowing the inner discipline. So that when I was studying, when I studied in preparation for being connected with earth, how to learn the language of earth, how to learn the language of the birds and the language of the trees and the, to be a, and the language of the animals, mm -hmm. how, to, how to learn how to be with all the sentient beings who are on earth, how to learn how to be with myself as a sentient being, how to do that. It's the doing of that. It takes you to that place of being to which you can come back and when you you're much more attentive. I am a much more attentive person. I may not look like it because sometimes I'm multitasking. <laughs> but again, the focus is not on the task. The focus is on the presence mm -hmm. that is here. And in scripture, we hear, be still and know that I am God. And each sister that, we, that I, that our staff, that our members journey with here, my attentiveness some days better than other days, is that each sister is coming to that place where she is still, still. S-T-I-L-L. -L. She, she is still, yes, I, 
Mm -hmm. I still have my southern accent, mm -hmm. and so my phonics fails often. Mm -hmm. But she is in that place of stillness, and I wish for her with all my heart that she hears the voice of God. That she hears the voice of, of God, God. Yes. who is saying, mm -hmm. well on. done, mm -hmm. good and faithful woman, come. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, mm -hmm. to have another day mm -hmm. to do that is um, wonderful. My years of experience with the, uh, with the uh, outcast in South Carolina that were with the Department of Mental Health and Long-Term Care Nursing, where I knew every day was a new start because they couldn't remember yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we have many sisters that are very close to where what they do remember of yesterday doesn't anchor them into today. They're present every day as the sun rises. It's a new day. It, so to be able to, to help, uh, to put my energy into helping every person who goes out to the circles of friendship at our, in our, um, our cemetery, in our cemetery <clears throat> every, every person that she finds that window she's called, that, that she's being called to be at, that she has that peace within, that, that uh, she has completed what she's been asked to do this time around. And so I hope that I myself am doing what I'm supposed to be doing to, to complete that. And the, I think after three years of being here, I have kind of firmly got my feet here so that I don't compare to what life was like in South Carolina. Yeah. I don't compare to weather now. I'm sure my friends are really happy about that. I stopped <laughs> talking about, well, in South Carolina, the weather's like this today. <laughs> they don't really care. And I come to find out I didn't, it didn't affect me. I wasn't gonna carry an umbrella here because it's raining in South Carolina. I mean, that didn't make much sense. So it's just being, uh, just becoming here, under, knowing the, the uh, weather patterns the air patterns, how the clouds flow, just learning how to talk the language here, talk to the cottonwood. Very important. Um, I just had the, this so, alert the other day, is that uh, all creation has a family. The birds, the cats, they have a family. All creation is a family. Yes, but there's, they have a history it's, like we do. They yeah. had a mother and a father yes. and a yes. grandmother and a grandfather. Yes. 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 Yes, very much so. Yes. Thank you, Mary Ray. I know so. we're not quite finished, but I just have to say thank you for bringing that truth and living that truth in the presence, especially of those who are learning right now to live in the present. And how, how, how urgent that is, especially as we come closer to our final days. Would, would you agree? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. I, I um, always, uh, gosh, let's say, Being here is a, is it has invited me to learn to feel with my heart than think with my uh, cognitive abilities, which still work <laughs> most at least at least six days out of the week. <laughs> but um, it's it's a very uh, it's just so important that we know we belong and. One of the things that I find important here, has, here at the DLC, is that the invitation during renewal, the time of renewal in religious life, the invitation to uh, renew by going back to the source, 
And so each of us did that with such an integrity and we experienced so many different contexts, so many different uh, variations, so much diversity. And now that we come here, we, we are seeking ways of sharing the fruits of that with each other, yes. with those that we not only dear, not only deeply care for, or maybe we never knew because we were a large congregation, mm -hmm. we know that with, at one point in crowds or groups, we said yes. And that yes mm -hmm. joined all the other yeses. We know that inside, in our, in our gut, mm -hmm. in our soul, mm -hmm. so that our soul space that we share, and we know that yes, that there are different variations of the yes, but the yes also includes those who were with us for a short time and then were called to take the wisdom of what was learned during that time. They were imbued with the charism and sent on another mission. They didn't go through our... Our, our system, but did never leave our system. And so for, for, for me, helping to be aware of what is your story, mm -hmm. helping to help sisters come to resolution, reconciliation, celebration, a humble acceptance of the giftedness of God. And letting go of the past of knowing that the past they're carrying within them has been transformed, mm -hmm. has been transformed mm -hmm. and brought into that place of consciousness that can accept the dark and the light, mm -hmm. and the light. Mm -hmm. Everything does not have to be light. We're still learning that mm -hmm. as we pursue to make, to seek truth, to make peace, peace. and to reverence, reverence life. So I am Amen. so grateful to mm -hmm. be a part of this consciousness that we carry, this heart connection. That's our heart vibration. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a profound. Because when our mind forgets it, our mind can't process that anymore, our heart continues to mm -hmm. still have that same vibration. Mm -hmm. So it's a blessing just to be here. Well, so we're I'm blessed. So grateful. We're blessed with your beautiful presence, Mary Ray, and, and the wonderful presence of your staff, who are, would you, would you mind naming them? Well, your I could, team, I should say. All right, all right. I will name our team, the team. All right. Um, I'm trying to do it in chronological order there. So Mary Ann Ennis, who is a one, she's a Wednesday chaplain. And an Adrian Dominican. And an Adrian Dominican, <laughs> who has served before as chaplain and then and now has come back and lives here. Jennifer Jenkins who is uh, a mother of six and um, has been with us for three, for two years. And for one year, uh, Kathy Johnson, uh, who is a Presbyterian uh, clergywoman, mm -hmm. who uh, is becoming an associate in 14 days. So very, that was not a requirement, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer is inquiring also, and we have a contingent person who will be part-time in September, Michelle Mello, and we have we are working with Annette Griffin. Now these the last mm -hmm. two I'm naming because what you do with your thought form is what you manifest <laughs> outside, and so uh, Annette has uh, made a transition back from the East. She was in New Jersey, and is come back here and uh, to Easter, south, uh, Southeast Michigan, oh, wow. and she has accepted uh, coming. So I'm 
hoping that we will be able to work that with her denomination. She's Lutheran, so I'm mm -hmm. hoping we'll be able to work that. But these are such beautiful feeling persons who know the art of pastoral care, who know how to walk with the soul in the places that we've been talking about mm -hmm. that I'm so grateful they for their They seem gift so one with us. That's right, yes. they are. Yeah, beautiful are. presence. And Indeed. we are so supported by administration. Mm -hmm. We are an integral part of the support base here, mm -hmm. the delivery of care system, mm -hmm. that, which is its own little entity. Mm -hmm. And we're very supported by uh, the congregation administration. Just so grateful for that. We, we still arm wrestle, but yeah, right. the <laughs> bottom line is the table has mm -hmm. never been moved. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that, that's a metaphor for, it's just knowing that we're solidly here. Well, I wish this could go on and I on, <laughs> because I know there, there are some parts of your life we have not touched, but you, you say it all in the present moment. So thank you for your thank presence you. here and your dedication to our sisters. The minute they are in the hospital, there's Mary Ray with them, or one of your uh, team members. Mm -hmm. um, it's a consolation, and especially at the, fi the final hours. So thank you for your beautiful presence, Mary thank Ray. You.